Hi everyone, well here I am um, on the green in Burnham Market and um, coming down here to draw and the subject is behind me really. Well here I am in the grounds of uh, my accommodation. Um, did a pencil sketch um, this morning, uh, uh, plenty of shadow work. Um, I've put the drawing down onto my watercolour paper. Now I'm going to lead you through the basic painting process. Well, here we go. I've got my uh, mop brush again that points and my palette with the normal paints uh, already um, laid out and because we've got very little sky on this subject we're going to keep it simple um, but I'm going to paint around the buildings um, so I'm just going to use tell you what I'm going to do clean the brush I'm going to use raw sienna right the way across most of the sky so I'm damping the paper with raw sienna that's something that uh, is there again unusual for me not uh, completely unusual but it's not uh, my normal way of doing things and I like to go um, away from the normal really because that's the thing that makes your painting interesting you know you stick with what you know and you end up a very stylized um, painting. Right now I'm going to clean that and into that goes Prussian blue and uh, reasonably strong Prussian blue. So I'm going to have a Prussian blue area there and so I'll, I'll get nice soft clouds because I've actually got the yellowing underneath. Now you would expect it to turn rather um, sort of green really but funny enough if I only don't rub away at the paper too much it doesn't they're mostly trees there but see the way you get a lovely glow and then once we get to this area we weaken the color because our sunlight is coming from this area here so all of a sudden we just weaken it off and there we go Nice bit of glow there, and basically the job's done for the sky. Love that sort of freshness there. We've got a tree coming up there. You won't see too much of uh, the sky. Um, what I might decide to do is just to lift away a touch. So I'm rolling the brush over the paper in that position. It's lifting off colour really. That's about all that's doing. And I'm going to roll the brush over in that sort of position. A little bit of that yellowing will come through. There we go. Now while that's drying, I'm going to put in, now it's all red tile roofing. Um, and the red tile roofing for me is light red. That's uh, the colour that I would suggest, particularly this little chappy here and it swings down like that you're going to get a bit of bleed of color which is not um, not a problem now I'm adding raw sienna to that light red quite considerable raw sienna and just dropping that in in places a little bit of light red as well a little bit lighter this time because I want that uh, roof to be lighter against what will be a tree coming in from the right so you have to think ahead all the time when you're um, looking at these subjects uh, a little bit more red in there just to paint in this distant uh, roof line there there we go now, with a reasonable amount of red, 
and just pull down because they are pantile roof areas. So I think it's nice to show a sense that we do have sort of like a pantile roofing in there. Just a little sense of it. A little bit of burnt umber now for the this building here just to give that sense of pantile roofing. There we go. Now, I'm going to use Indian red now into that to create different red, really, with the raw sienna. I've actually put too much in there, but um, raw sienna introduced with that Indian red, that's better. And that, to me, is more or less the colour of um, this cottage here. And it's going to be lighter than the, um, the roof. There we are. Good. Another area of red there. Keeping it nice and simple. A bit more yellow dropped in for this brickwork here. So you just keep it nice and simple. Free and easy colours. Don't want complications when you're painting. You know, the simpler it's um, the subjects treated the better the outcome. There we go. Then we're down to the main wall there. Bit of planting. That's white. That's rendered. Right, the sky still has a little bit of, of strength. Um, a little bit of dampness, sorry. So, to the winds of blue, I've added a touch of raw sienna. Let's be a little bit stronger with that because it's still rather, rather damp there. It's just a cool blue, really, that I'm just swinging into that area there because there is a tree there that sort of glows in the distance and that finishes on that roof line. Should hold. Not too concerned if it doesn't, but it should hold in that area. Nice and dark there. There we are. Now a bit more yellow now, a bit more raw sienna. So a little bit, even a little darker. I'm picking up around that chimney, the roof line, and flicking out like that. And it's all blurring with that um, that damp sky. And the good thing in this is this evening it's uh, still rather cool and damp. It's not a hot evening. So that's of benefit when you're looking at this sort of subject. And then I'm adding a little bit more cadmium now to give me an even fresher green. Well, not as fresh as I wanted, but a cadmium yellow. And that seems to be working quite well. And I'm going to pick around that chimney and that's running across that area there. Uh, it seems to be holding quite nicely. Just flatten that chimney off. There we are. And then you just paint down like that around that chimney then we go around this chimney and it breaks out like that into the sky that's the most distant area if you can um, imagine that and then we finish sort of like about there as you can see the colors still growing into the um, the roof line particularly there which I'm not really worried, but I will make adjustments. 
and the adjustments is purely a brush just to lift off just to stop that going back in and then almost a dry brush then just to lift away and that just should soak up that colour there we are brilliant now also we have light red again for this um, this area here this is really sunlit chimney like that it's just imagining um, the sort of colour you're going to get really later on that's the key to it and um, and sometimes it's when you're learning it is difficult to know what the colour will end up at so that's that good I'm adding a little bit of blue to that Indian red Windsor blue because I've got a um, a slated lean-to storage area there that's what that is and we've got some little cutting back just to allow that there we are so that's looking good this is also red brick so we're going to produce a red brick feel to that corner there and then it's going to be behind that fence gate actually not fence it's a gate there there we are and then we just lift off again just to lift away that colour it's nice just to blend it and, you know it's not all about specific shapes Good, let's just allow that to dry. Now while that's drying, I'm moving on to the foreground. Now I want sunlight there again into this foreground area. My usual trick is to pull that raw sienna across like that. I like this sunlight feel. Um, a little bit of green now added. Um, we've got to give an entrance to the building a bit more of green there cadmium gone in little touches of raw sienna quite rough feel in the foreground leading us towards the um, sunlit buildings um, yep and just another place for this sort of green would be Nice strong green there. That's the way I feel. There you go. Look at that. Wonderful. Now we have shadow. So it's burnt umber. Winds are blue. Or Prussian blue. And... touch of cadmium yellow just to give it the green and that will eventually be the shadow or the start of the shadow from that tree so that goes like that then we add more blue more cadmium slightly deeper tone and then we sweep this lovely shadow into parts of this foreground lovely sense of glistening on that uh, foreground area and I'm just going to put some bits of red in it'll be um, particularly there and here a little bit there 
in a little bit there. Good. So that's the foreground attended to. Now we have what I'd class as soldier bricks that stand up over the top of these windows like that, down the edge, across the base, particularly on this cottage here. And of course that is actually flint. So just remember that when I come to paint up finish the uh, window surrounds going in and they also go around the doors as well in most cases there there, there, and there. They're quite simple. Doesn't want to be fussy. No need for any fussy detail. Just using a bit of light red now, a bit of burnt umber in there, just for a roof that's in the distance. Now that may need to be darkened, it may need to be lightened. That I'm not sure of until we get the final washes in and then I'm going to use that colour for the chimney there, the chimney there and this chimney here which is actually brick and it just comes down to that sort of position oh there's a bit of area there and a roof line that goes out and then we have a chimney there with a red chimney pot so that's going to be interesting and the red I'm going to be tempted to put in a bit of cad red for that um, so we've got that chimney pot there and one that stands just there double chimney pot Now, the one with the dark uh, area there is going to be light red. So it's going to be a little weaker in colour. There we are. Now we've got some nice piece of walling there. It's this lovely red brick with three steps, some raw sienna on the path there or on the area running um, up the side. It's sort of like a gravel really, but we've got to continue that through to there like that. Now these windows, are, they have a surround but it's not that visible. So what I'm doing here is just softening and I'm just allowing that, that will give me a variation of um, that's it, that's better softening those just to give a variation of the brickwork really because it is a little deeper around the windows but nothing too uh, too distinct but um, does need some careful clearing like that there we are right a little bit of red a little bit of yellow and a touch of burnt umber with a winter blue in there to create that um, porch area that stands out over the doors now the windows okay 
Right, we're going to use Ultramarine. Let's use Windsor Blue. Not Ultramarine, Windsor Blue with a touch of Indian Red. Uh, there you go. That's a lovely window colour. And let's start this side. We've got the root window in the roof there. Now I'm not going to fill all of that in. Same goes really for all of the windows. Um, we're going to fill in enough to suggest windows without painting them all in. And what I'm going to do in that lower area, get rid of most of the paint on the brush and then just pull it down like that. So I'm suggesting, and I'm going to do the same here, suggesting windows. And because I've softened the surround, um, we're going to end up with a nice impression of glazing without actually painting every single glazing area in. Same there, and the same there. Now that's a technique and a half. Um, but for me, quite often it works. Sometimes it doesn't, but there you go. Door one there, door there, door window. Um, there is four windows here in this door. There's a little bit of colour to that too, so I'm going to have to attend to that shortly. Right, while we have this colour, I'm going to put in the gutter. Nice little bit of downpiping there. We have the gutter running across there bit of damp piping that sits right on that corner which is quite unusual and then just a bit more paint required for this I want to make them gutters too wide that's quite wide but never mind can lose a bit of that behind trees um, good now I remember seeing berries on this, so it's a little bit on the ready side, so I'm using um, touches with the point of the brush of cadmium red. And I'm cleaning the brush. Now I'm going to use cadmium yellow with a bit of raw sienna in there for the spiky pieces. Is that a technical term I wonder? Spiky pieces. And then we go in with the dark sort of greens really. And this is where we begin to get the feeling of a shrub. And then we have one there, one there, one there. One there. Run those away. A little bit of hedging, clean the brush, just cadmium yellow now for an area there and an area there. Little touches on tops of what are fairly manicured, fairly well manicured um, area of green really. Uh, a little bit more blue now. These are in the shaded area. Like that. And a bit more brown. Burnt umber. Going in just to try and pick up a sense of shadow in places here and there. Leaving plenty of light. Um, what else have we got? We have a little creeper of some sort here. And we do here actually. And that creeps up and heads off up there. A 
what sort? We're not really worried. We can't really be too concerned with exactly what um, sort of creeper we've got there. Now I seem to remember that the window frames have quite a distinct blue on this cottage here. So I'm going to put those in to give it time to dry. That's too, too dark. It's considerably lighter than that. Whoops. There we go. And it's more sort of just winds are blue really. So just, ah, oh, that's better. Just swing that colour into that. There we go. That's better. And of course the door being that colour as well. There we are. Now we need burnt umber, a bit of red for the nice gate, five bar gate there. Put in with fairly dry brush. One, two, a bit more moisture required. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. There's the five bars. Brilliant. Okay, and we've also got some edging bricks that sit up on that corner there. Like that. Along the top, down on that edge as well there. That's it. And of course, forgetting that this is a slightly darker brick. So I'm putting that in. Although some of it will be in shadow, but it is a darker brick because the rest of this, and that's also darker slightly, the rest of that is rendered. And to show that, I'm going to use raw sienna. Just drop in. I want to indicate a sense of stones within, because although I've used a red, now using a yellow to indicate that it is flint stone. And I'm just you just dotting around some harder edges here, softer edges there, just to give that a feeling of a flint stone effect. I think we do have some edging brick down there, like that. There we are. Now we're getting very clo uh, close to putting in shadow, so that's my next move really. And the shadow I'm going to use is Windsor Blue and I need a fairly deep shadow, so it's got to be Indian Red. There we are, Windsor Blue, Indian Red, plenty of blue, not too strong with the colour. A little bit of strength, but not too strong. Now you've got to remember, with the sun coming here, you would have a shadow just on the underside of the overhanging bricking there, like that. Then all of a sudden it would come down like that and down like that then completely shade that area there believe it or not just go right up to that edge then it would then slope down like that and that lights that up perfectly the same thing would happen here. You'd end up with 
shadow there coming out like that then down all the way down there a bit more blue in this now I want that to pack a punch if you're going to show shadows put them in with determination allow that uh, brickwork to show but let's not be too tentative with this well and to justify that shadow we need a shadow over a lot of that and then of course a shadow that justifies that that runs up to it there you go right now on to the building itself um, let's do the shadow on the underside there and down there or oh, up the roof line there there we are there would be a shadow to the right there and just underneath we'd have a nice sloping shadow across there down the left hand side of the window and under the sill across the top down the, sorry the left hand side of the window and all of a sudden it's coming into shadow just underneath there because the sun is directly facing it then we have another shadow at an angle there and across there like that just sweep it through don't rub quite blue across the top down the right another deep gusset across the top down the left sorry not the right I keep saying right so it's down there and there is a porch area there that casts a shadow so but overall that's pretty much it across the top down the left the wider you are with the shadow the dark the lighter the brick or stone work will look it's a general rule of thumb I think there we are and a little bit weaker now for the shadow under here because it's going to run into an area of an overhanging tree across the top down the left across the top down the left and of course there is a sill these are white frames but we're not getting too complicated with that and then under there and then inside and down the left all of a sudden those windows and the building pops out bit of shadow work there shadow work under the brickwork gonna have a bit of shadow now down that left hand side of the chimney sorry right hand side here we go wrong sides a little bit under there and down there mm -hmm. seems to be good we haven't put the uh... oh and then there'll be a little bit of shadow down the steps from that wall perfect now finally there will be some added shadows from on the right hand side of this greenery here a little bit on the overhanging there any um, creepers that we have a nice bit of punch running across there a little bit of shadow there a bit of shadow running across the door there um, very very impressionist seal there perfect finally 
we're going in with this dark overhanging tree. Now to start with, I've got a little bit of yellow in there. Cadmium, Windsor, Prussian Blue and Burnt Umber. Perhaps a little bit of Indian Red too. So I'm using that as the base to the overhanging branches. There we go. Now there's going to be a bit more blue and a bit more red. Just to darken it off a touch. Not too dark to start. You can always get darker. And there's quite a bit of overhang. There like that. And these are not specific shapes of leafing. But they're an impression. And that's the key to what we're trying to achieve here. I am anyway. Now I'm going to go considerably darker because in the lower area I need more denser branches. A bit more yellow, a bit more cadmium just to yellow it up a little. Just being a little careful because I don't want that to overpower the rest of the picture. So you have to be a little careful how you approach this, but I think overall seems to be working quite well. And it also justifies the shadow that will be enhanced shortly. And it sort of comes down to about there, really. Really comes forward where that building sits back, which is the general idea. Bringing that out just a touch more here and there. And then there is the trunk, which I'm going to use burnt umber for that, with the mix that we've got. And we're coming down like that and spray that out. We actually have another branch coming there whether that's that important or not I'm not sure and then we have the main trunk and branches that are coming up the center and just a little bit more water in that mix that's better and I'm using the point to indicate some branches with this lovely old um, brush that I have here. A little bit of overhanging there, a bit more there. Perfect. And then this, of course, needs cleaning before we add a little bit of red to that to create a shadow that runs up. Doesn't want to be green or not too green, which runs up from there towards the building. Now, how far does that tree shadow extend well we're going to bring it to there just up across that door get rid of all that there we go and just sneak in the outside Brilliant. Now what I'm going to do, half clean the brush and just swipe a little bit across here. A little bit down there, just to take away from the from that. And then it just needs softening. And I think, from my point of view, 
that pretty much says everything I need to know or need to state about that lovely little those lovely buildings across the green here in Burnham Market. Final little touches um, we have a ridge tile needs just to be suggested um, ridge tile there just suggest that not too much there because it's not important that's right um, not too much there um, right, what else am I looking for something to put in when really perhaps it should more or less be so like class is finished probably just feel that needs some enhancement here and there particularly down the pantile roofing just suggesting dragging the brush down and one or two little touches going across drag that brush down make certain when you do this it's in the direction of pan tiles themselves it's got to be in keeping with the rest of the build or the roof there and then we're then going to enhance the pan tile feel along the roof just like that and there we go and all of a sudden you know that the roof line is uneven down there bit of shadow there Good. Got a feeling we're not far away from saying that's good enough. Just feel that I need a figure of some sort and a figure tucked here would suit my feel of the day. There like that. And a bit of fleshy brown for the head, like that. And then the red will enhance the body shape. And then a dark brown, sorry, dark blue for the legs that sit more or less there with another figure just there like that with shadow running away like that and they all of a sudden set onto the ground good let's allow that to dry well there you have it I've removed the outer covering or the surround um, one or two little touches with the, the building sharpened up the edging and the brickwork around the outside but it's nothing to really um, be too um, concerned about. All I've got to do now is um, sign it basically. I'm going to sign it in the bottom right hand corner with um, fairly dark paint. Obviously the paint that I've used is going to be signed just here. hope it's dry. Well, it's blurring a little, but I think that may be of benefit. There we are, all signed up. And there you have it. The cottages across the green, Burnham Market, not that far from the Host Arms. Mm -hmm.